Welcome to GetChemistryHelp.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to determine the mole ratio, or the ratio of atoms, given the chemical formula. And then we're going to apply that mole ratio in mole calculations involving Avogadro's number and molar mass. Now we know that the molecular formula is the ratio of atoms. So for example, H2O is the molecular formula for water. So that tells me that there are two atoms of hydrogen for every one water. Or it tells me there is one oxygen for every one water. It also tells me that there is two hydrogens for every one oxygen. So there's lots of ratios that I can pull out of a chemical formula. Well, this same ratio also works for moles. So that means there are two moles of hydrogen in every one mole of water. Or there are one mole of oxygen for every one mole of water. Or even in a mole of water, there's two moles of hydrogen for every one mole of oxygen. So there are numerous different ratios that we can derive from the chemical formula. Well, these could also be written as conversion factors. So I could write this as two moles of hydrogen per one mole of water. Or of course, I could always flip this and say one mole of water per two moles of hydrogen. Or one mole of oxygen per one mole of water. Or even two moles of hydrogen per one mole of oxygen. So there are numerous conversion factors possible. So let me work an example problem here and I'll demonstrate how we're gonna use that mole ratio. So this question says, what is the mass in grams of a copper one sulfate sample that contains 2.03 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper. So the first thing to notice is that we have two different substances here. This one is copper one sulfate. This one is copper. So I'm having to relate two different substances. So whenever you have two different substances, that's where we have to use this mole ratio. So the one I'm starting with is the 2.03 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper. So 2.03 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper. So I'm starting with copper and I'm trying to get into mass of copper one sulfate. Well, I just showed you that the way to relate one substance to another is through the moles. So I need to get atoms of copper into moles of copper. Well, we've learned that the way to get particles such as atoms into moles is to use Avogadro's number. So for every one mole of copper, there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper. So atoms will cancel. Now I'm in moles of copper. So here's where I can relate one substance, copper, to another, copper one sulfate. So first let's figure out what is the formula of copper one sulfate? Well, copper one sulfate, copper one would be copper positive, sulfate would be SO4 two negative. So if I swap these, do my crossover method, I would have Cu2 SO4. Okay, well how many coppers are in every copper one sulfate? Well, there are two. So I can use that as my mole ratio. So I want moles of copper on the bottom, so two moles of copper per every one mole copper one sulfate. Okay, now I've turned copper into copper one sulfate, but I want mass of copper one sulfate. So how do we turn moles into mass? Well, we use our old friend, the molar mass. So we add up two coppers, one sulfur, four oxygens, and I did that and I found 223.17 grams. That's the mass of a mole of copper one sulfate. So moles cancels. I'm left with grams. So let's see, this one has three significant figures. Avogadro's number has four. 
This is exact because there's exactly two coppers in copper one sulfate. So this one is exact. Just make a note of that. And this number has five significant figures. So how many should our answer have? Well, we got three, four, exact, and five. So three is the fewest. So I got 37.6 grams. So that's the mass of copper one sulfate. So we had particles. Whenever you have particles, you got to use Avogadro's number. Then we got into moles of copper. But I wanted to go from copper to copper one sulfate. So whenever you have two different substances, that's when you have to use this mole to mole ratio. And then once I got into moles, I could go from moles to mass using molar mass right here. How about number two? How many bromine atoms are in 39.2 grams of strontium perbromate? So now I'm trying to turn mass of strontium perbromate into atoms or particles of bromine. So we're starting with 39.2 grams. So strontium perbromate. So we'd figure that up and you would get this. SR parenthesis BRO4 parenthesis 2. Well, I'm in mass. So whenever you're in mass, the only thing you can really do is molar mass. So let's find the molar mass of strontium perbromate. So get out your periodic table and let's see what we have here. We have one strontium. We've got two bromines. And we've got two times four, eight oxygens. So find strontium on the periodic table and it is 87.62. Two bromines, those each have a mass of 79.90. Eight oxygens, those are each 16.00. So let's work this out here. 87.62, 159.80, Add them all together, and I get 375.42. And against the molar mass, so it's the mass per mole. Okay, so that's the mass per mole of strontium perbromate. Well, I'm in mass, grams, so I need grams to cancel. So I will flip this little conversion and put the grams on the bottom. 375.42 grams is a mole of strontium perbromate. So grams cancels. Now I'm in moles of strontium perbromate, but I'm trying to get to bromine. So whenever you have two different substances, that's where I use the mole to mole ratio. So how many moles of bromine are in every mole of strontium perbromate? Well, we said there are two bromines. So I put one mole strontium perbromate on the bottom. And there are two moles of bromine in it. So this cancels. Now I'm in moles of bromine, but what do I want? I want atoms or particles. So to turn moles into particles, we use our friend Avogadro's number. So one mole of bromine, just like one mole of anything, is Avogadro's number. So moles of bromine would be atoms because that's the particle that makes up bromine. So we'd multiply through here. We've got three significant figures, five significant figures. This is exact, and four significant figures. So the fewest is three. So I got 1.26 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of bromine. How about number three? What is the mass in grams? of xenon hexafluoride sample containing 40 grams of fluorine. So again, I have two different substances. I got xenon hexafluoride and I got fluorine. So I know the way to relate those is the mole-mole ratio. Well, I'm starting with 40.0 grams of fluorine. So I need to get all of that into moles. So I've got mass. The only thing to do with mass is molar mass anyway. So look on your periodic table, find the molar mass of fluorine, and it's 19.00 grams per mole of fluorine. 
So grains will cancel. Now, how do I relate fluorine to xenon hexafluoride? Well, what's the formula for xenon hexafluoride? That would be XC, and hexa means six. So, how many fluorines are in xenon hexafluoride? Oh, there's six. So, there's six moles of fluorine in every one mole xenon hexafluoride. Okay, now I'm in moles of xenon hexafluoride. I want mass. So moles to mass, we use molar mass. So find one xenon and find six fluorines, add those together, and I got the molar mass to be 245.29 grams per mole of xenon hexafluoride. So multiply through, and we've got three significant figures, four significant figures, this is exact, and then five, so the fewest is three again. So 86.1 grams, and of course it's grams of xenon hexafluoride. So there's the mass of xenon hexafluoride that contains 40 grams of fluorine. Okay, our last example here. What mass of oxygen would be in a sample of iron three carbonate that contains 813.2 grams of iron. So this one I've got oxygen, iron three carbonate, and iron. So I've got three different substances, but they're both found in iron three carbonate. So it's kind of like earlier when I discussed water, where there was oxygen in water and hydrogen in water. Now I've got oxygen in iron three carbonate and iron in iron three carbonate. Well, we're starting with 813.2 grams of iron. Well, before we can do anything, whenever you got mass, you got to turn that into moles. So we use the molar mass. So look on our periodic table, we find the molar mass of iron is 55.85 grams for a mole of iron. Okay, well, what's the formula of iron 3 carbonate? Well, iron 3, that would be iron three positive. Carbonate is CO3 two negative. So if we do our crossover, we'll get Fe two parenthesis CO3 three. Okay, so how many irons are in iron three carbonate? Well, there are two irons. How many oxygens? Oh, there's three times three, so there's nine oxygens. So this is our ratio of irons to oxygens. There's two irons for every nine oxygens. So I want moles of iron to go on the bottom, so there's two moles of iron for every nine moles of oxygen. Now I'm in moles of oxygen, but what do I want? I want mass of oxygen. So moles to mass, our old friend molar mass, find oxygen on the periodic table, it's 16.00 grams per mole of oxygen. Moles will cancel. We left with grams, so we've got, this has four significant figures, four significant figures. Nine and two are both exact, and 16 has four, so our answer should have four. So I got 1,048 grams of oxygen. Or I suppose you could write that in scientific notation, 1.048 times 10 to the third grams of oxygen. Either way. Well, I hope you enjoyed this lesson on mole ratios and chemical formulas. As always, be sure and click on the subscribe button so you can be notified as soon as new lessons are posted. And we will see you next time back here at GetChemistryHelp.com. Thank you.